I, this morning I was speaking to Reeve, uh, Terry Olson from the MDA Greenview, and he was talking about the shortages and a lot of the business communities in rural Alberta that they're facing. How do you see your government working with rural municipalities to address the shortfalls, especially with newcomers, uh, Albertans and Canadians? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, one would be that we created a, a rural stream so that we're able to have um, businesses in that community connect with newcomers so that they have uh, people who are able to arrive and get supported in, in uh, not only a job, but also being able to build a life there. We are, it's unfortunate we had asked the federal government to work with us on allowing us to use more of those types of streams because we think that's actually the, the perfect option. If you have a business owner who's able to find an, a, an employee that um, has the skills that they need and is prepared to provide the wraparound services, that is the, the, the perfect pathway for, for somebody to become a permanent, a permanent resident and ultimately a citizen. But the, the federal government has not uh, hindered our call on that, unfortunately. And so those programs tend to be oversubscribed. The next step that we're doing, of course, is to encourage uh, young people to look for new opportunities as well. We're, we're, we're very troubled by the high youth unemployment rate. It's almost double what the general rate is. And so that's part of the reason we put such a strong emphasis on trades and professions and careers, because we think if we can get those young people attached to have excellent careers earlier on, then that will allow them to, to, have, uh, to have an incredible opportunity and also start looking beyond the borders of Calgary and Edmonton. Calgary and Edmonton um, are often a landing point for people to arrive when they come from outside, but there's, there's no reason why someone can't find an incredible opportunity in the Grand Prairie region, in Fort McMurray, in Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, and, and, and in Red Deer. And there's a great value proposition for all of that because we've got some of the most affordable homes in, in, uh, in all of North America. So that, those are the, the things that we're working on doing, is getting, uh, getting young people and those who are uh, newcomers and those who are even looking at mid-career changes to, to know that there's lots of opportunity all over Alberta. Off topic from this conversation, yeah. but I want to talk about oil and gas companies for a second, if yeah. you don't mind. RMA has called the, for the provincial government to do something about these zombie oil and gas companies mm -hmm. that are failing to pay their property taxes up in Big Lakes County. That alludes to about $9 million that they're short this year because of oil and gas companies not paying their fair share. They're asking you to do something about it, and it seems to be a reoccurring thing that they're asking. Yeah. Can you do something about it? Well, I think we have to be honest about whether the companies exist. I mean, you call them zombie companies, and some of them are. Some of them might have no revenues, and if you have no revenues, they're not able to, to be operating. So what we're working on is a mature asset strategy where we can identify those companies that have liabilities that need to be cleaned up and to get them cleaned up so the land can get returned to its natural condition. Or if they have assets that are still viable and producing, uh, get them into a viable company, a uh, company that is also able to meet its, uh, its liability obligation. There are a number of companies that really got underwater in the last 10 years, and that's one of the things that we're trying to sort through, is how many of them don't only exist on paper. And if they only exist on paper, we've got to be honest about the ability to collect taxes, and we have to be honest about what we're going to do about those liabilities because those will need to be cleaned up. So we're doing a mature asset strategy review. It includes the RMA. It includes landowner ad advocacy groups because we want to be able to, to get the answers right. Next question. That's it. 21. Going twice. <laughs> Can I follow up? Sure. One last. Sorry. Yeah, I know you said 10 minutes. Um, I want to talk about rural health care for a second as well because you don't often get a chance to talk. Uh, your Minister of Health yesterday announced a new initiative. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is going to address the shortfalls that more rural municipalities are facing right now? Because you're going to be speaking to RMA, mm -hmm. I'm speaking to your, their members, and that's a concern for them is their shortages at the clinics and hospitals in rural Alberta. Well, part of what we know needs to be done is we've got to get every Alberta attached to a family care practitioner, whether that's a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a, uh, a team practice or a pharmacy that has uh, the ability to do primary care on site and prescribe. We, we're trying to find multiple different avenues for somebody to get that good primary care. Um, with the nurse practitioner's funding model, we want them to have a larger patient panel, 900 plus, and we, we have incentives for them to locate in rural communities as well as be available evenings and weekends to be able to fill some of those gaps. But we think by having a, a separate dedicated organization focused on building out primary care, 
that we'll be able to achieve that target. We, we've noticed along with everyone else that um, increasingly doctors have, um, have chosen not to go into primary care. So that's part of why we have to create a, a new funding model for our doctors to, to make that a more attractive uh, area of practice, get more team practice so that the whole load doesn't fall on the doctor. They can use nurse practitioners, nurses, and other health professionals. And we think it, it's that combination that's going to allow us to be able to attach every person to a, a, family, a family practitioner, which is vitally important. That's the first access into the, into the uh, healthcare system, and it should be. And we've heard somewhere in the order of about 600 or 700,000 Albertans are left without care. So that's why we've made such a push on it. You go back to the conference. What's your message to newcomers to Alberta today? Well, I'm, I'm so delighted that so many people have chosen Alberta and that they're doing well and that they're paying it forward. That, that's the, the thing that I've noticed with the various partnerships that we have is that when somebody does well, they want to help carry others along with them so that they can do well as, uh, also. We've had uh, a much larger number of people coming into Alberta than we anticipated. It's creating strain. We're hearing about that. Um, nobody wants to see somebody arriving here full of hope and opportunity and not get their credentials recognized. Nobody wants to see someone come here and instead of being able to get an affordable place to live, they're living in a shelter. So those are the things that we're attempting to address now is we want to make sure that we can deliver on the promise that we have when, when people come to Alberta. And so we're working with the federal government to try to address some of the, the issues that uh, we think we can manage. If we can have a more direct approach where we can recruit uh, newcomers so that they can get attached to a job right away, we think that that's the pathway to success. So we're, uh, I'm delighted to see that the conference size doubled this year. I think that, that shows that there's a lot of people wanting to, to make sure that we can identify problems and solve them. Great. Thanks very much.